for probably 30, 35 years, I've kept a sketchbook. Sketchbook is somewhat of a pretentious term, maybe. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that goes into that sketchbook. It's almost like uh, this need to understand the physical world leads you by the nose to places that you might, you know, not normally visit. <laughs> My wife and I will travel, you know, and she's a little more specific insofar as, um, oh, we gotta make sure we see that, we gotta make sure we see that. Whereas I tend to just kind of meander down some alleyway and, and you end up discovering something that way as well. I think oftentimes, whether it's photography or drawing or sketching or painting or making little models to represent some of these things that you've seen in your own best way, wonderful thing to be able to do, to have the license to do. And that all comes back in. It's, it's like uh, the, the big pot that you've just thrown everything into. And at some point, something good is going to come out of that pot, you hope. <laughs> so stuff sits in that book, like it sits in our heads and our hearts. But I also start to work on tracing paper. The drawings become much more specific. Also fairly early on, I start building models. So three-dimensional, cardboard, wood, um, other materials sometimes, just folded paper. I have a little uh, wood shop at home down in the basement. I haven't uh, really clipped any fingers yet. <laughs> You know, my father was an old world trained silversmith and my mother was a weaver. So I had two people very close to me who made things that were useful and who made things that were beautiful. They were also things that were honest. They wouldn't have thought of making something that had any kind of artificial ring to it. Making a room carefully, making a room that's useful, making a room that's well lit. Uh, starting with that as the premise, that you're creating spaces that really serve the need that those spaces are intended for, and not some stylistic uh, flavor of whatever month we're in, um, that you're really, you know, at its root, you're really making essential space that is needed. Style is, uh, you know, it's, uh, that can be somewhat elusive in certain ways. I mean, it, it, it's sort of understanding the place that just becomes so critical to the things that I come to admire. You know, on some levels it's very personal. You're working with other people, you're trying to please them, uh, make something that's, that's good for them. And it's not just you, it's also those people that you collaborate with. And to also give them a share of this delight, this creative process, and see them enjoying it and responding to that. Uh, there's, there's great pleasure in that. There used to be that mystical belief that somehow good creative people go into a cave and it comes out, you know. Maybe they've, they've just sort of been reclusive and they've just sort of made it magically. And some people foster that. The reality is this is like one big creative party. And uh, to have a party you've got, you know, you, you got to get a lot of people in the mix. If we're able to make things that are beautiful, those things will be loved, they'll be taken care of, they'll be respected, and they'll remain useful. But that's really the second part of it. The, the beauty inherently also lies in the utility. You know, it's like a good fork. It, it might be beautiful if it didn't function effectively, but it's a hell of a lot more beautiful if you can actually get the peas into your mouth, you know. Um, and a building's much the same way. So I would say that's what I strive for, you know, that it's, something very useful, honestly made, and in the end, beautiful.